Good evening. It is 6.09, and we are calling this meeting to order. Uh, we start with uh, roll call. Alex Cantu, present. Claudia Ochoa, present. Nereida Cantu, present. Mary Hernandez, present. So we, we have a quorum. Item number three, Ple Pledge of Allegiance. This afternoon, we have uh, Hilario Gonzalez, Jr. Hilario is the son of Doreida and Hilario Gonzalez. Uh, Hilario is a college and career center senior. He has faced obstacles in life, but he has persevered, and through hard work, he's achieving success at CCC. I love your height, Hilario. <laughs> Hilario. Uh, Hilario is uh, EOC complete, and that's the hardest thing, so we're really proud of you. He's college ready, and he has already obtained uh, an AWS welding certificate. And currently, he is attaining a medical assistant certification while he completes his credits to graduate from high school on May 28, 2019. Awesome. Will everyone please stand as, as Hilario leads us for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hilario, we're very proud of you. We wish you the best, and thank you for your good work. I know his principal is here, Mr. Um, Ronnie Cabrera, so thank you, Ronnie, for being thank here you. and supporting your student. Thank you, Hilario. Item number four, approval of tax, tax collector's report. So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Cantu. I second that. Second by Mrs. Hernandez. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item number five, approval of minutes. So moved. Motion by Mr. Cantu. Second. Second by Mrs. Cantu. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item number six, superintendent's report. For the superintendent's report, I'd like to uh, report that in terms of uh, enrollment, we have 13,453 elementary students and uh, 14,396 secondary students for a total of 27,849 students. Any questions on the enrollment report? Mm -mm. If there are no questions, I didn't get a chance to ask, but we need um, Mr. Cantu. And Ms. Cantu, if you could please step forward and help us recognize uh, our staff this evening. Mm -hmm. Our first recognition is gonna be Mr. John Robinson. Uh, <laughs> and it's gonna be, he's gonna have a formal introduction, so we're really, really excited. Mr. Alex Carranza, who is our elementary science coordinator is going to help us introduce, formally introduce him. Good evening, Madam Vice President, Board of Trustees, Dr. Benavides, Central Office Administration, and La Jolla ISD community. My name is Alejandro Carranza, and I proudly serve as La Jolla ISD's elementary science coordinator. This evening, it is my distinct honor to come before you to recognize one of our very own. In the days following the notification that this recognition will indeed take place, I began to brainstorm the, the best possible way to introduce Mr. John Robinson, fifth grade teacher at Camarena Elementary. My objective was for my words to capture the impact Mr. Robinson has had in all those that he has served, and thus the essence of this recognition. Therefore, this trial and error approach took me to the best way to do just that. I'd like to introduce Lisbeth Morones, President of the Science National Honor Society at the Academy of Health Science and STEM Professions, and her sponsor, Dr. Don Clark. Good afternoon. My name is Lisbeth Morones, and I am the President of the Science National Honor Society at the Academy for Health Science Professions and STEM. Our school is focused on preparing us for careers in the health science and engineering field. So of course, science is a big part of what we do, but it did not all start in high school. We, we were fortunate enough to have amazing science teachers in our elementary and middle school years. 
Last year, our student organization commenced the tradition of nominating the teacher who had made the most positive impact in our science journey. This year, we have selected one of our elementary teachers who inspired us with, ex with the excitement of science, and that teacher is Mr. John Robinson, a teacher at Enrique Camarena Elementary. We would like to offer him a token of appreciation and thank him for the education and inspiration he gave us. If we could have you come forward also so you can do the picture and Dr. Plas and uh, his principal, Ms. Mary Lily Garza. There's nothing better than to be remembered after having a, 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 a good, good teacher, so that's awesome. <laughs> Too bad you don't have two awards. Congratulations, Mr. Robinson. Well deserved. Well deserved. Our next recognition is recognition of the La Jolla ISD Texas Citrus Fiesta Float Committee members uh, for placing third in our Hollywood style <laughs> Oscar winning district uh, More Opportunities and Choices Float Competition. And I know I wasn't there, but I heard it was great and I saw pictures. And a special thank you to Mr. Cantu, Ms. Cantu, and Mrs. Ochoa who were able to to be on that float and highlight our students. So there was a lot of hard work that went into this project, and so we'd like to take the opportunity to recognize them tonight. Uh, Ms. Lily Salgado will help us uh, name those staff members that helped us create this beautiful float. Good evening, Mrs. Vice President, School Board of Trustees, Dr. Benavides, and members of the audience. As Dr. Benavides mentioned, tonight we would like to recognize the La Boya ISD Texas Citrus Fiesta Parade Float Committee members for their outstanding work and dedication in building the La Jolla ISD float. Together, this group of individuals came together to come up with a fantastic display of district pride, pride and braved the cold and rainy weather a couple of weeks ago in an effort to promote our upcoming La Jolla ISD Opportunities and Choices event and our district as a whole. They are Mr. Tony Salas, Ms. Norma Garza. Ms. Irma Neri. Mr. Jaime Garcia. Chief of Police Raul Gonzalez. Ms. Norma Garcia. Ms. Isabel Ortiz. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Nelly Tapia. Mr. David Ochoa. Mr. Fernando Salinas. Mr. Heraclio Perez. Mr. Renato Valdez. Mr. Mario Flores. Organizing them. <laughs>
Great, great job. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Excellent job. Our next job, I mean, our next recognition, great job, guys, really, really great, is recognition of La Jolla ISD for efforts in energy uh, conservation. And we have Mr. Lloyd Loya, director, who's going to uh, help make this presentation. Good evening, Ms. Uh, Madam uh, Vice President, Board of Trustees, uh, Dr. Benavides' uh, administration. Our next item is uh, the agenda is an incentive check, which we have received for energy efficiency. Uh, before I present our AC, uh, uh, rep, I'll, uh, I want to say a few words on behalf of my, behalf of my staff, my department. Uh, first of all, I want to thank our current and our previous board for putting us in the position to receive this check. Uh, I did some research. I went, I went back 10 years, and uh, by far, this is the biggest check that we have ever received. So that's something to be proud of. Um, I'm going to give you a brief history of how we got here. Uh, as we all know, in the summer of 2017, we embarked on the journey. I'm gonna call it a journey, that's what it was, uh, to completely retrofit, to convert our entire school district to LED. And I stand before you tonight, and I can probably say that as of December 2018, during our winter break, we completely retrofitted our entire school district. So that's something we got. <laughs> uh, there's only a, a handful of districts in the entire state of Texas who can say that. I believe three or four to be exact, and La Jolla ISD is right up there. Um, I'm going to say this right now, and I'll continue to say it anywhere I go. La Jolla ISD is the place to be. We are second to none, and, we're, and, and uh, a project like this just proves that we're always ahead of the pack. Um, with that being said, I want to thank uh, everyone who, who was a part of this project. I want to thank Mr. Vela and Mr. Morin. Mr. Vela was, uh, he, he was there uh, in, in the early part of this project, and Mr. Morin helped us finish the project. So thank you for your leadership and always having our backs. and. Gave me a green light for everything when I needed something on the weekends get a, to have a campus open or a, a door open. You never told me no, so thank you, sir. And Mr. Rella is not here, but thank you, Mr. Rella. Uh, and again, uh, I want to thank uh, the La Jolla ISD staff as a whole. Uh, I know it was, it, they were really patient. They were really understanding. I know it was really tough uh, that we had a company to, uh, that would work in the evenings in their offices and in their, in their classrooms, but, but we, 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 we got it done, and, and I, I'm, I'm a... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm proud to say that La Jolla is, is 100% LED and, and we're, we're going green. Um, with that being said, lastly, I just want to thank the board for everything you do. You guys always go on, uh, above and beyond, not just for our students, but for our community and for our staff. Thank you, and with that, I want to present Ms. Lupita Romero. She is our uh, AC Texas Power rep. Thank you. So that was a great overview of, of just the project on its own. So I'm going to give you some background as to what the AP Texas Board program does. Uh, my name is Phoebe Romero. I'm the program manager that oversees the AP Texas Central Division program. Um, and basically, it stands for Schools Conserving Resources. It's offered at no cost to schools and universities across the AP Texas territory. It represents a partnership between the district and the utility. And while you all receive uh, cash incentives and technical assistance, um, the utility benefits from a more efficient use of transmission and distribution system. So I'd like to thank the La Jolla ISD maintenance, facilities, energy team, everyone who approved this project for their leadership in pursuing this LED lighting retrofit. Um, some numbers, the annual energy savings for the incentivized portion are 3.8 million kilowatt hours annually, which according to EPA calculations would save the, it's, it's the same as the carbon emissions from 304 thousand gallons of gasoline in the environment. So um, that's great accomplishment. And yeah, so this evening I'm here to present a check in the amount of $133,590 to La Jolla ISD to reward you for the energy savings achieved. So thank you.
Our next recognition, and this is a really, really awesome recognition uh, because we had an uh, administrative review in our cafeterias, in four of our cafeterias, and so we're really, really proud uh, of this particular group of people, uh, La Jolla ISD cafeteria managers and staff. Um, it's going to be the managers and the staff, right, Galina? Yes. Uh, that participated in the 2018-2019 Texas Department of Agriculture Administrative Review, and Mrs. Galina Reyes, who is the uh, CNS Child uh, Nutrition Services Director, is going to help us introduce uh, these uh, staff members. Well, good evening, La Jolla ISDN community. Good evening, Mr. Garza, Board President, and Ms. Uh, Ms. Ben Dr. Benavidez, Superintendent of Schools, and members of the Board. Um, La Jolla ISD Child Nutrition Department recently underwent a federal audit conducted by the Texas Department of Agriculture. These audits are conducted every three years. The 2018-2019 school year, it was an audit year for La Jolla ISD. It was completed in January 16 and 17, 2019, and the areas reviewed were as follows. Menu planning for all levels, pre-kinder, K through fifth, six through eight, nine through 12. All grade levels were evaluated. Meal components, food production records, counting and claiming, as well as comprehensive financial review of all child nutrition accounts and numerous other records as well. This audit was conducted over a 12 week period. All this culminated to the following results. I am proud to report to you and to our community that we receive confirmation of an excellent review. Wow. Which this this means that there were zero findings in all the areas mentioned oh, wow. and more. Um, in recognition of the zero findings and material review, the Texas Department of Agriculture would like to congratulate our entity, which is La Jolla ISD and all child nutrition professionals. As you know, this review covered critical areas of review, both district-wide and also at La Jolla High School and Richards Middle School, Tabasco Elementary and JFK Elementary. Clearly, your, the entire child nutrition department staff is committed to safeguarding the health and well-being of your students. This is words from the state. The Texas Department of Agriculture is proud to partner with La Jolla ISD um, because they, they, they show the highest standards of caring and service by teaching children the relationship between proper eating and good health. So I want to thank the specialists from TDA, which were Ms. Sally Page, Adriana Diaz, and Evelyn Clark. I want to thank Region 1 because Region 1 was amazing support. Ms. Carmen Ocaña and her team were amazing, and I want to thank Region 1 as well for all their long hours of support, training, and guidance. I want to thank, of course, all the administrators, all the leaders, uh, Dr. Benavides and all the board members, all administrators, and also all departments, because this was a district effort um, from custodial to maintenance to, um, I, I would really say it was everybody, transportation, um, the city of Peñitas, they closed construction for uh, the auditors to be able to get to where they needed to be in a timely manner because their students are first and they needed to observe all the procurement and all the guidelines and process that we encounter every day through their breakfast, through the lunch and through the after school snacks. So it was a team effort, it was a city effort, it was a community effort, so thank you to everybody. And I wanna take some time to also uh, thank our, our, my staff, which you're gonna see right now. My staff is um, child nutrition warehouse staff. I don't have everybody but I would like to congratulate and honor the ones that are here. So if you allow me, I wanna introduce you now to the Child Nutrition Warehouse staff, and I'll start with Ms. Kimberly. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, I'll start with Mr. Rolando Hernandez. <laughs> Mr. Luis Pastor. Luis Pastor. Elud Alaniz. Kimberly Sosa. Kimberly. Mary Cerda. Hilda Flores. 
Laura Flores. Thank you. Felix. Miss Juanita Barajas, Felix Mercado, and Friaco Cárdenas. Thank you so much. also taking the time to recognize the four schools who went under the audit. They received the state physically in their campus on January 16 and January 17. Um, the first school that received the first visit from the state was La Jolla High School. So. Thank you to, to Mr. Cano. We are excited. <laughs> Sorry. You have every right to be excited, so that's okay. So I will start with Mr. Cano, principal of La Jolla High School. <laughs> Laura, Laura Torres. Cafeteria manager, Laura Torres. Guadalupe, Guadalupe de la Rosa. Iliana Cantú. Eustolia Dávila. Elizabeth Elizondo. Jessica Garza. Luz Garza. María. I'm sorry. María de Jesús Garza. Alejandrina Guajardo. Rebeca Leal. Oralia Morales. Orfelinda Salinas. Elia Treviño. Iliana Vallejo. Gonna do two rows, Tony. <laughs> Congratulations. was Anne Richards Middle School. Thank you. And for that we had Mr. Ocaña, principal of Anne Richards. Okay. Congratulations, La Jolla High School. Thank you very, very much. The next school, um, it was Anne Richards Middle School. Uh, they also got visited on that Wednesday. They got up here for breakfast and lunch. And we have to thank also Mr. Uh, Ocaña, principal for Anne Richards. Idalia Torres, cafeteria manager. Mariana Garcia, 
and Yolanda Malacara. Congratulations, and Richards Middle School, we're proud of you, very proud of you. Our next school who represented our district into this audit is JFK Elementary. So we want to thank Ms. Guerra, principal of JFK, for all his support. Um, Nora Tamez, our cafeteria manager. Irene Salazar. Laurentina Perez, Maria Cantú, Mabel Jiménez, Noemí Flores, Nora Guzmán, Thank you, Miss. Thank you. and our excellent subs, Virginia Solís and Mauricia Flores. Thank you, Miss. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Sí. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Gracias, felicidades. Congratulations, JFK Elementary. We're proud of you. Very, very good job. Thank you. represented us in the audit is Tabasco Elementary. So thank you so much for Principal Ms. Contreras for all your support. <laughs> Juana Jacqueline Tamez, Cafeteria Manager. <laughs> Adriana Alonso. <laughs> Juana Hernandez. <laughs> Nancy you, Ocaña. Miss. Y mi Valentina Casanova. Thank you, Miss. Muchas gracias, Miss. Sí. Yes. Thank you. Congratulations, Tabasco Elementary. And in, in front of you, it is a district uh, letter from Texas Department of Agriculture certifying that we had no findings. It was an excellent audit. And in the history of La Jolla, this is the first time that we received these honors. And there were some commendations also added into our documents, which has never happened before. So I'm very proud of our team. I'm very proud of our district. La Jolla is the best district in my eyes, in my heart. And thank you for all the support to all the district and community for this creative achievement. Thank you. Thank you, Galina, and again, congratulations to all the cafeteria staffs at these four schools and their principals for all of their support and all of their great work. Muchísimas gracias a todas ustedes por todo su trabajo que hicieron. 
Uh, yo sé que no es fácil cuando nos vienen a checar, pero ustedes se aventaron. Thank you very, very much. Our next item on the agenda is uh, the Texas Accountability System uh, recommends that we include ways that we are, uh, that we always report at every board meeting uh, one, one area of our accountability system. And today we're going to highlight our college career and military readiness uh, department and uh, our fine arts department and our athletic departments. And so we have our directors who are going to highlight their programs and some of the things that they do. The first one is Mr. Jorge Flores, our CTE uh, director. Welcome, Mr. Flores. Thank you, Dr. Benavides. Uh, welcome and um, uh, good evening or good afternoon, uh, members of the board, uh, members of the uh, Central Office Administration, also our community members. So this is the first meeting that we're having with uh, to uh, highlight our CTE program uh, for this year. I'd like to start with the mission and our vision statement, and we found that, find those in page two of our presentation. Uh, our mission says that we want to provide industry-linked programs and services that enable all individuals to reach their career goals in order to achieve economic self-sufficiency and to compete in the global marketplace and contribute to the nation's economic prosperity. As part of our vision, we also vision that our programs will engage every student in high-quality, uh, rigorous, and relevant educational pathways and programs to turn their passions into paychecks. More formally, right, uh, we, we mean their dreams into their careers. So that's, that's our purpose. And with that in mind, I'd like to uh, focus our attention on page uh, three, where uh, in the 2017-2018 school year, this is our, our certifications that were um, issued by our department for our students for the previous year. As you can see, the net total is uh, 2,030. That's how many certifications we, uh, we were able to issue. And this graph will give you the certifications by cluster. Uh, so, you know, we can automatically see that in the health science cluster, we got a good number, hospitality and tourism, and so forth. And so this is, this is by our areas within the classrooms at the high school uh, or secondary campuses. I'd also, I also broke down the, uh, for you the, the, um, the, the certifications by, uh, by name, and that is on page five of your uh, document. Um, page five will list this, this, this uh, document. And what this does, it yeah. gives us all the certifications that we were, uh, it's the same number, 2030, but now it breaks it down by certification name. And uh, so this is what we have um, as far as what we issued up for last year. So once again, our number totals out to 2030. And that number is very, very important because I just had Ms. Uh, Irma Herrera, and my apologies for not providing this document beforehand, um, but this document that she just passed out, uh, this is actually our regional data and this document uh, puts La Jolla ISD, you know, highlights our district and our efforts for what we've done. Uh, and I came in last year uh, in, in, in March, so I came in a little bit, you know, when a lot of this was already in progress. But nonetheless, uh, if we look down under La Jolla ISD, uh, we can see a uh, 10, and that's a purple. And anytime the way they set up the, the, this chart, anytime you see purple, that's equivalent to a letter A as a, as a grade so to speak, in that department. So because of our industry-based certifications that were awarded last year, uh, we had uh, a letter grade of an A in that respect. So the Hoya ISD was obviously once again in the good radar because of our, of our efforts within that department. And so we made it as, and got a letter A within the CT program for a CCMR. So I, I wanted to point that out, just so you can be, um, be aware. One of the things that I wanted to share with you this afternoon was in regards to our, our labor market review, uh, which starts off in page, uh, in page six. And there's a reason why I wanted to share this uh, with you. As we were closing out the year for the 2017-18 school year, heading our way into the 18-19 school year, we came across uh, our course request where our, our district goes back into the, you know, and see what the kids are requesting for the following school year. And we saw a demand in the area of manufacturing. And so we went ahead and proceeded to make some changes, and I'll discuss them later. But one of the things that really struck my attention was that our labor market review actually uh, was in, aligned, uh, in alignment with what we were experiencing at the, at the high school. So if you look at page um, seven, and I'll go back to page six, but if we look at page seven, um, 
we can see that chart. We received this information from the TWC, Texas Workforce Commission, and uh, there's two areas that are highlighted in blue. One of them is in healthcare private education, which we know is already saturated and it's a market that has a lot of, a lot of jobs. And you can see the numbers, 3,200 jobs were created, but the growth was only 2.5%. Now, in the manufacturing, uh, we saw a growth of 1,100 jobs. However, in terms of growth, the manufacturing field was really uh, made a big impact with that number. So now we had an 8.5% growth, which is interesting because that's what we experienced at the latter part of the 17-18 school year. So as we went into the 2018-19, we, we carried these, these ideas forward into adjusting our program. So as once again, you know, as, as we can see those, and page six is just a summary of what I just discussed. So I wanted to move a little bit forward into um, our, uh, our, our page eight of, of our discussion. So for the 18-19 school year, to address the demand in the manufacturing sector or the welding sector, we went ahead and added one more facility at La Jolla High School. We uh, bought also equipment for the welding uh, facility. We brought another teacher for the welding facility, and we have invested well over $280,000 in just that program, and that number is increasing because the year's not over yet. So we're still, that's, that's a figure for last year and this current uh, school year. With this in mind, we have a couple of initiatives within this program. Our health science program is already pretty healthy, very healthy. Our business program is very healthy. We want to make sure that our manufacturing program meets the demand of the students. So as like we had our, our student that you know, did the, did the uh, not the invocation, but the uh, Pledge of Allegiance earlier, he, he's one, he's you know, within this program that obviously that's he's a product of. So with the help of the grants department, and I want to thank Ms. Leal personally, thank you Ms. Leal for all your help, with our grant development department, we've been working also with the Texas Work Workforce Commission in submitting grants to do a couple of things in our manufacturing program. One of those things is, and, uh, is building a virtual lab. Uh, anytime we look at the industry, the, you know, we use simulators a lot. A pi an airplane pilot does not get into the airplane right away. He goes into the simulation, goes through many, many different factors, many different scenarios before he learns how to do that, before he gets into the plane. We are trying to do the same and, and replicate that from the industry where we have a simulation program software lab so that the students can practice and move forward. I, uh, I was gracious enough that Ms. Leal was able to bring down Miller, uh, which is the company that built these, these machines, and they, they had a demonstration for us. Um, and interestingly enough, we had a family that was from IDEA trying to make their way into, into our district, so we happened to cross, uh, cross path. We brought her in, brought the kid in, had them play with a simulator, and they were just uh, astounded by it. It was, it was a great experience. I tried it in the past. I tried welding this time around by the simulator. My shirt was in one piece. In the past, <laughs> it had been torn because of the, you know, I'm not very good at welding, obviously. But this simulator, we tried it, and what I liked about it is I was testing it, and I asked, you know, the child, the, it allows you to measure, it has a tutorial on demand. So as you're simulating the welding process, it, get, it goes forward and tells you Okay, fix your angle, go slower, slow down, you know, move your hand up and so forth, all within the screen and while the professor is seeing everything on the screen in real life data as the student is, is, is welding, through, uh, welding through that little piece of equipment. So um, Ms. Leal was very, very, very instrumental in, in, in pushing that forward, so I, I thank her once again for her efforts. But we have that in, in, in progress. One more thing that I'm trying to push that we're working very closely with STC is that in the... Um, Implementation of this lab, our teacher is also dual enrollment for the 1920 uh, uh, school year. So we're trying to go, you know, it's a pretty aggressive effort, but with the help of, you know, and I, I want to thank my superiors for all the support, and uh, thank you for everything, you know, for all the support that you've given us. But with all that help, we'll be able to move forward in this in this department. And so, once again, thank you, Ms. Leal, for 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 that for that uh, for your help. Just a couple of things to, to wrap up. I, I know it's, uh, we're um, in the press for time a little bit, but nonetheless, me, as I know my job duties and uh, I'll make my personal pledge that I will continue to provide the highest degree of educational experiences for La Jolla ISD students. I'll continue to work with our regional partners and local entities to provide students with the best on-the-job training or practicums, which we already have in place. We wanna make them better for our kids. We also want to continue working with the Texas Workforce Commission to identify areas of high demand and allocate resources accordingly. Along also with Ms. Leal, we've been working very closely in the JET grant, and we've put that in place. Uh, that's been submitted. 
Voss will be uh, had the opportunity to, sub to submit uh, through her office and in conjunction with us, Focus Area 2 in the Perkins and also with Region 1 for Focus Area 1. So we, we have these endeavors, to uh, these measures to try and obviously make our program succeed. Uh, anytime I can, I will put La Jolla on the spotlight. Um, I've been meeting with parents and, and uh, I have had meetings. I thank Memorial Middle School for inviting me to one of the meetings last week. And we've always tried to expose this information to the parents so they can be aware of what La Jolla offers for their kids so that they, they, they know that this is the best district to be in. With that in mind, I got a call from Region 1, and, and uh, uh, I just want to mention this. Another opportunity to showcase our district. On February 27th, uh, we have been selected by Region 1 and TEA to showcase our STEM program because our STEM program is very, very strong. And literally, from quoting from, from uh, Region 1, is what we're doing here, they want, we want to take it up higher up in the states. And, and uh, so I want to bring that up to, to, uh, to everyone's attention that that's where we're headed. And so this, uh, what they refer to as the CCMP uh, listening tour will be, will be one of those participants on February 27th. So I'm very excited about that because it'll give them a chance to showcase what we're doing here at La Jolla. And they want to know about industry-based certification, student enrollment, uh, the list continues. And so we want to make sure that obviously we're in the spotlight for very, very good, uh, positive things. Um, and also I'll um, continue working with our parents. I've, I've asked our social workers to plug me into the meetings, invite me. And I'm more than happy to be out there talking to the parents, advising them about our CPE program. Um, I know I speak a little bit fast, but uh, if there's any questions, this includes my presentation, unless there's anything that uh, you desire uh, from me at this time. I would like just to add that, you know, I'm hearing very positive things about the, the CTE, and, and I want to commend you and your staff for the Thank outstanding you. work that you all are doing, and you have our most support uh, moving forward with, with, your, with, uh, with this school year. Thank, Thank you, you so for much, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, it is a collective effort. Uh, we have over 120 teachers, uh, and, and, uh, and then my staff members here at Central Office, so it's a collective effort from everybody. So thank you, and I'll, I'll, I'll pass it on to them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank, yeah. Thank you. Any CTE staff members in the audience, if you're here, would you please stand? Because I know. Thank you. Next, I'm going to call. Uh, thank you, Mr. Flores. Great job. Um, and thank you. Uh, now we're going to have Mr. Adame for Fine Arts. Good evening, Madam Vice President. Members of the school board, Dr. Benavides, administrators, and guests in the audience, I'll be uh, presenting to you an overview of the La Jolla Fine Arts programs here in our district. Presently, we have these following classes that we offer at the high school, middle school, and elementary music. And as you can see, we have a lot of programs, and then we even have some programs within the programs. For example, in the dance, you you have uh, modern dance and the drill team and folklorico, and in the music you have mariachi and conjunto. So we have uh, several programs within programs that we offer, and, and it's a very unique situation here in our district because in other districts they don't offer the type of things that we offer here at La Jolla ISD. Some of the performance opportunities for our band and choir and orchestra students, our participation in TMEA events such as all region auditions, all region clinics and concerts. All our programs participate in UIL events, such as concert and sight reading, evaluations, and solo and ensemble contests. And all our programs in the music departments participate in performances inside and outside the district, such as high school cluster performances, all city concerts, middle school solo and ensemble contests that, not, that are not offered by UIL, seasonal performances, campus performances and various out of district performances in festivals and other competitions. In our visual arts uh, classes, there's theater arts who participate in one act, uh, UIL one act plays, both middle school and high school. And we've just begun uh, a collaboration of middle school with high schools where they interact with each other to put, put on uh, winter musical oh. productions to expose the middle school kids to what they have to uh, offer at the high school and we're finding that that's showing a lot of interest and being very successful. In our dance department, excuse me, in our dance departments we have uh, 
opportunities for our dance people to participate in Valiance Dance Educators competitions and various dance festivals and competitions in the Valley and outside the Valley as well. In art, we have bass competition, which is happening this weekend at Nikki Road for our high school students and junior bass for our middle schools. And we've be begun this year of showing off some of our art exhibitions during some of the performances at the PAC. We're trying to get more art students to show off their work. Uh, if you've never seen some of the artwork from some of our art students, it's amazing. Uh, I, I can barely make a square myself mm -hmm. that looks like a square, but some of our kids are fantastic. And you'll see some of these kids when they'll be recognized in May uh, because we have a lot of kids that win national uh, awards through the base competitions, and some of their work is just outstanding. Talking about our enrollment at our elementary schools, all elementary students receive elementary music instruction, and every student participates. So based on the numbers that Dr. Benavides said, we're talking about 13,000 students that get music education at our, at our elementary campuses. And that's not the case in all districts. I'd like to add that. At our middle school, we have an enrollment of 52, 34 that are involved in band, choir, orchestra, theater arts, dance, and art class. In the high school, we have an enrollment of 4,042 involved in those classes as well. For a grand total in secondary campuses, of 9,276 kids involved in fine arts classes. So when you add 13,000 elementary kids to that, you're talking about 22,000 students in our district getting some form of fine arts instruction. I think that's commendable for our district. Mm -hmm. Some of the support we get from our district as far as budgets, every fine arts department or class is given a workable budget at the beginning of the school year. Assistance for purchases are always available from our office if there's a need from any particular department and they need assistance on top of their budget, we always help out all the time. Inclusion items for budget consideration has always been supported by the school district and our board. Instruments are available to all our music students free of charge, which is also very unique and very different compared to many districts, not only here in the Valley, but in the state of Texas. There's always a needs assessment that's conducted in April and May. If we see that there's a need for instruments or equipment, an inclusion item is submitted for district consideration for the following school year's budget. No student is ever turned away from any fine arts class for lack of ability to purchase an instrument or supplies. Some examples of assistance. In the orchestra, you can see that we've purchased $300,000 worth of instruments in the fall of 2014. The fall of 2017, we helped purchase storage cabinets and even more instruments for Thurvenio Middle School in particular. In the band department, you're going to see a whole lot of bullets here. We'll just put them all up. Uh, we, the district purchased $1.04 million of instruments for middle school band departments in the fall of 2014. All three high schools have gotten brand new uniforms in the amount of 95000 for each high school. Uh, we've assisted numerous middle school programs with tuxedos and dresses for their competitions. And as you can see, the, the support has been enormous. Uh, not too long ago, the fall of 2017, the district awarded us $450,000 to replace some of the brass instruments at all three high schools as well. In the Mariachi Department, Juarez Lincoln got a new uniform in the spring of 2017. We've assisted uh, the Palm View La Jolla Mariachi programs by helping them purchase new instruments as well because of growth. And just this past fall, uh, we created a, a budget for the Palm View Conjunto. They never had a budget, so we set aside some money for them because they are so in demand not only with our district, but outside the district. And they go to numerous competitions all over the, the state and come back with some pretty good hardware. And, and they represent our district very, very well. Some other examples, our district was very generous in purchasing three tractors and three trailers for our high school bands for the marching season. They also provided funds for custom trailer wraps for each trailer. And last year, they provided funds for us to buy wraps for all the trailers. So 
the students and the teachers would have an easy way of putting in and taking out equipment and also a lot safer than just lifting. We've had uh, assistance for the PAC. We had a presentation about LED lights. We didn't have any working uh, special effect lights uh, for a while and uh, the district was very generous in helping us replace all those old lights with new LED lights and if you've gone to our shows you've seen them. That's pretty impressive. Uh, also to purchase a new light board which is very expensive. Just recently two brand new chillers to provide proper heat and cooling for the entire, not just the auditorium, but the entire building. And, and if you don't know the history behind that, we were having trouble with the heating just because the units were very old. And so I think they just finished putting those in probably about a week ago. So we were very, very thankful for that. So with all that said, we were awarded last year or recognized to be a 2018 National Association Merchants uh, best Communities for Music Education Award. And the only way <coughs> the district gets awarded this and recognized in this fashion is the financial support, the number of classes that are offered to all students, then the participation, and, and also are, are, are the kids succeeding. And, and I will say that we've had some departments that have been more successful than others, but little by little, and I'll just say for two departments, uh, for example, the, the choir and the orchestra departments have, have improved immensely within the last two years. Last year we took a full orchestra from La Jolla High School to a contest. That's the first time in the history of the district that we've ever taken a full orchestra and the kids got to experience what it is to perform in a, in a professional setting. And our choirs have been amazing. Some of you have heard our choirs perform here for Christmas Day and, and oh my gosh, mm -hmm. it, and they're just getting better and better. So we are hoping that we get this recognition again. We'll find out in April of this year. And I'm pretty confident that uh, I'll be informing Dr. Benavides that we were awarded this again. So what does the future look like? Well, we're committed to evaluate and meet the needs of all our fine arts departments. We're committed to assist all our departments with growth and improvement. We're committed to advocate for the improvement of equipment for all students. We're committed to support all our fine arts teachers and students, and we're committed to continue to provide opportunities for all of the Hoy ISD fine art department teachers and students to sort of success. That concludes my presentation. Any questions? Thank you so much, Mr. Adame. Um, I know our fine arts has always been up there, and it's sometimes hard to just continue to have it, you know, be up there, you know, with all these schools that are emerging and their talents as well, as good as La Jolla, but Thank you for all that you do to all your staff and everyone that has done this possible. Well, we appreciate you. all the support. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Any fine arts staff members in the audience? If there's any fine arts staff? No? They left me all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, is actually rehearsing they're right now. I thought they're probably practicing, yeah, yes. So Thank you so much, Mr. Adame. Yes. Great job. Thank you. <laughs> just like to remind all presenters um, no offense to anyone but it's a five-minute presentation for each and so our next one is our athletic department and do your highlights I know we have lots of highlights in athletics so we have coach Guajardo and coach Roger Hernandez to help us with this um, part of the presentation Good evening, um, members of the board, uh, superintendent, Dr. Benavides, and members of the community present. Uh, we're here today to do an update on La Jolla ISD athletic programs. We're going to start with the goals of the department. When we started is to increase the numbers, and to increase the numbers, not only our overall numbers, but also our girls' numbers. And in 2017-2018, we had a total of uh, 1,749 students participating uh, in athletics. And this is at the middle school level. In 2018, 2019, those numbers increased to 1,845. That was an increase of 96 more athletes, um, that or more athletes that are participating. Also on the girls' side, we have uh, 35 more girls at the high school level 
um, and here you can go down to the high school level. We have a total of 2,434 high school athletes participating in sports. We have 35 more girls um, in 2018-2019 than we had in 2017-2018. On the boys' side, we have 42 more boys participating in athletics from 2017-2018 to um, 2019. So those numbers, overall numbers, we have uh, 66 more girls participating in sports um, between 2017-2018 and 2018-2019. Some of the programs that we have at the elementary level, uh, we believe that we need to start them young, and the younger the better. So we partnered with the City of Palmview Parks and Recs Department, Mr. Lugo, and we also partnered with the uh, City of Penitas, the Parks and Recs, uh, that's about to start its league in the next uh, two weeks or so. And um, also, they're, they're hosted by the elementary schools. We have a third through fifth grade. We have um, sports that they participate in. And um, uh, we also have our punt, pass, and kick. And all six grade, punt, pass, and kick is from grades uh, second through sixth. We have our sixth grade field day where all of our middle schools participate. We come to the track and we have a track meet, but we called it a, a field day. Um, we instituted this past year working with the Sports and Learning Complex, Coach Garza, and the Athletic Department, um, participation of uh, tennis, swimming, and golf. Now, uh, tennis will be later on in the spring. We're going to have uh, all third graders participate in tennis instruction at the Sports and Learning Complex, a total of 1,870 students. We already had all of our fourth graders swimming participate. All of our elementary uh, students were taught uh, safety skills and learning how to swim. They were there at the natatorium for a whole week being taught how to swim. And um, they were being taught by some of our ex-students, some of our students, ex-students, ex-swimmers, ex-divers. They're now lifeguards that um, are hired by the district. And we're going to have our fifth grade golf tours. Um, that is going to be coming up in the month of May. We, have a, we should have a total of 1,993. So all of our elementary students, all 23 elementary will be um, exposed to that. Um, our health and wellness events, this is where we have our, our teachers and staff uh, participate in the wellness tournaments. In the softball tournament, we had uh, 41 teams participating. And uh, we also have our kickball tournaments and our volleyball tournaments that we have our, um, our wellness uh, teams and they come out and participate. And that's all departments and as well as the, as the elementary and middle schools and high schools. Community events, this past year, we had a, a cancer awareness walk. We had a total of 1,109 um, members come out and participate. And that is a lot of our teachers and staff and, and paraprofessionals, uh, all of our staff that go out there and, 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 uh, and go and, and you know, make, this, make people aware of what's going on in our community. These are the three largest causes of death in our community uh, for our Hispanic community, which is uh, cancer. We do the jump rope for heart because of the heart. And the diabetes walk was uh, started by the Lions Club um, not too long ago. So uh, last year we had uh, 308 students, uh, well, members of the community participate. And the Jump Rope for Heart is uh, coming up February the 11th. It's going to be our second annual. Last year was the first one. So we're going to have our second, uh, this second annual district Jump Rope for Heart. Equipment, um, as you can see, uh, it's uh, budgets compared to other districts. At the middle school level, we received $217,000. At the high school level, we received $392,000. And additional projects, we received $291,000 for additional projects for a total of $900,670. If you compare that to McKellen IZ, uh, more than three times the amount that uh, is provided to our students compared to McAllen ISD, and over $200,000 more than PSEA ISD. Uh, the comparison between McAllen and PSEA is because those are the districts that we compete against in our middle school level, and those are the districts that we compete at the 6A level. Additional funds, and where was this spent? Um, last year, we got a middle school batting cages. So all of our middle schools received uh, batting cages that are used for both baseball and softball. Our middle school practice uniform attire, uh, several sports received uh, completely new uniforms. For practice, $89,000. Our middle school football helmets, uh, $50,000 was allotted to that. And uh, our middle school two-man tackle sleds. Um, so every middle school has a, a tackling sled. And the football helmets, all of our middle school, all of our middle schoolers, there is uh, 276 helmets in the valley that are Speed Flex helmets. La Jolla IZ has 269, 269 of them. There's only seven 
seven more, four in Brownsville and three in uh, FAR. So we have 269 helmets out of 276 speed flex. Those are, uh, it uh, features a flex system with a flexibility engineered into a helmet shell, face mask, and face mask attachment system with hinge clips to help reduce impact force transfer to the athlete. Pretty much it limits uh, the force that the kids are hit with and uh, limits concussions. So uh, we have the same helmets as, uh, they have the same helmets as the varsity kids. Some of the funds are used in um, eighth grade football speed helmets, uh, wireless headsets, our head coaches at the varsity level, both defense and offense, have um, new coaching wireless headsets. They use the same headsets as the NFL uh, coaches. Uh, new uniforms for boys and girls sports middle schools. Um, we have the modern water cows, which limits um, how much they can make uh, contact with their mouth, so it limits the amount of germs that, you know, um, that are transferred. We have a new updated TriCaster for football stadium for broadcasting, so that way uh, we can uh, broadcast the games um, at the stadium. And we also provide proper equipment per sport for students who cannot afford it, that is uh, baseball gloves, cleats, under attire, whatever it may be. Um, if it's not on the budget and the coach asks ask us for it, we'll make it happen for them. Transportation, La Jolla ISD is the only ISD in the Valley to provide transportation to and from practice from sporting events for all athletic programs. Uh, this is a big one for us because without transportation, I don't think we would have the numbers that we have. Um, the next closest competitor is uh, PHA ISD at 414,000. Uh, we spent 1.5 million this past year on transportation alone for practices and for, um, for games. Some of the highlights uh, that we had in 2017, 2018, state playoffs qualifiers, our cross country state finalists, uh, the kids made history, the girls Palm View team won regionals. Um, football playoffs, wrestling state medalists, we had kids uh, place in state in the top six. Powerlifting state champions, we had back-to-back uh, -back state champions in back-to-back -back years. Special Olympic state champions, they just went up there to Austin and competed. Uh, we're gonna be back hopefully next board meeting and recognizing them uh, for their accomplishments. Soccer regional qualifiers, Track and field state qualifiers. Uh, we have our the tennis district champ. He uh, goes to Palm Beach High School. He's one of our students. Golf regional qualifiers, swimming and diving state qualifiers. They'll be going um, on the week of the 14th. Uh, baseball and state playoffs qualifiers. Boys and girls basketball state playoffs. La Jolla ISD had a total of 19 senior athletes signed a letter of intent to go and play at the next level scholarships. Um, one of our athletes, a golf a golf student ended up signing, um, you know, everything paid for over $100,000 just on, the, on, the, on her freshman year of college. So all this would not be possible uh, with your support, Board of Trustees, administration, and um, here we have our, um, all of our coordinators at the middle school level and our high schools, could you please stand and be recognized? for your support. I have a question. I know you mentioned high school and middle school, uh, but how does your department support elementary? I know with PE, uh, do you uh, support them by giving them bats, gloves, um, balls? Yes, uh, I didn't include it in the slides, but we give them a budget besides what they get from their, from their um, the campus principals. Mm -hmm. We also give them um, a, a budget that can be used additionally to that uh, we used to have it secondary in um, elementary. Now elementaries will get, from now on, they're going to be getting um, the budget so they, can, so they can order additional equipment to that. And so does that go directly to the principal, or does that go No, it'll go, to... it'll go, it'll go through us, yes. In the past, they would alternate for PE equipment. Um, elementaries would order one year. Secondary would order the, the following year. We did it this year, elementaries, and we're going to keep it like that, elementary, to continue to keep on ordering. That way we can start them younger, and I think they need the money more than at the high school. Uh, that's P, P equipment. Yes, excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, Coach Guajardo, I know that I was looking at the numbers, uh, but we're losing a lot of the girls. I mean, is it that they're not transferring over when they're coming from middle school to high school? Or, or is it me that I didn't get to see the numbers correctly? But uh, I we think were, that we're, we're on the middle schools with the girls, the... the the participation. Is there anything oh, going that we from can... Going from middle school to high school, yes, we lost some of, the, some, some of the girls. But overall, at the high school, from last year to this year, we went up 35 girls okay. at the high school level. And, and at the middle school, we also went up 96 more athletes, and we also went up 42 more girls. Is there a way, like, maybe we can send some of the coaches 
either high school, middle school, to try to recruit some of those girls back? What we're doing uh, now... Unless they're joining something else, because I know they might end up, you know, joining other... Yeah, uh, what we're doing now, it's um, we're sending the freshman coach. We believe that the freshman coach is the most important person because when they go from the eighth grade to the ninth grade, that's who they're going to be making contact with. Uh, a lot of times we, we want to send our varsity coaches, but that freshman kid, we end up losing him at the freshman level, not when they're in 11th or 12th. So we're sending our freshman coaches that, down there. That way they can make contact with the, with the middle school students. I don't have a question. I just want to reintegrate it just a little bit. Uh, I want to close this one out. I want to just, just want to make sure that everybody understands the, the amount of time that uh, coaches, the, the CTE department, and uh, what was the, other one? Fine arts. the fine, fine arts, arts department put into it. They spend mm -hmm. hours and hours preparing and making sure that the kids have the proper resources necessary to to compete at the next level. But I just want to thank you all for the time and effort that you all uh, put into all the three departments that just presented today. Thank you so much, thank Coach. You. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Thank you very, very much. Very well, we move on to item number seven, discussion items. Before we do that, I'd just like for the record, Mr. Salinas joined us at 635 and Ms. Ochoa joined us at 657. Item number one, under discussion items, report for reading diagnostic test results for middle of the year. Good evening, Board of Trustees, Dr. Benavides, and administrators. My name is Claudia Estela Munoz, and I am one of the elementary language arts coordinators. The purpose of the presentation today is to provide a follow-up on our district reading progress as requested by the board at the December 10th board meeting. At that time, we presented beginning of the year data for kinder, first and second grade, based on the Texas primary reading inventory and the Tejas Lea assessments, which are highly reliable early reading assessments designed to identify the reading development of students in kinder, first, and second grade. Before going into the numbers, we would like to impress upon you that the TPRI and Tejas Lea assessments are on level end of year assessments. After being administered at the beginning of the year, our teachers used the results to guide their instruction and provided targeted prescriptive instruction throughout semester one. The TPRI and Tejas Lea assessments are administered three times a year at beginning, middle, and end, so that now, at, now that middle of the year testing has been completed, teachers will make adjustments to their instruction to ensure all students meet end of year goals. We will now proceed to the middle of the year reports. Good evening, my name is Kathy Pulido. I'm one of the language arts coordinators. I will begin by sharing the middle of the year Texas primary reading inventory results for kinder through second grade. The assessments consist of different components and this evening we will reporting on phonological awareness, graphophonemic knowledge and listening comprehension for kinder and comprehension for first and second grade since these are the areas of focus on our district improvement plan. We'll begin with our reports. We will focus on the shaded area on the right, which indicates the 2018-2019 middle of the year data. The middle column represents this year's BOI data. For Kinder TPRI, the data indicates that 46% of the students were developed on all phonological awareness tests. We had an increase from 8% to 46%. The percent developed on all graphophonemic knowledge tests is now 90%. At BOI, we were at 68%. For listening comprehension, 85% of our students were developed at middle of the year. We increased from 44% to 85%. In first grade TPRI, the data indicates that 78% 70 of our students were developed on all phonological awareness tasks. We increased from 48% to 78%. The percent developed on all graphophonemic knowledge tests is now 82%. This is a significant increase from BOI, which was 56%. Comprehension average was 58%. At the, at, at the beginning of the year, we were at 9%. For second grade TPRI, the data indicates that 48% of our students were developed on all graphophonemic knowledge tests. We had an increase from 15% to 48%. Comprehension average was 66% developed. 
We were at 57% at the beginning of the year. We will now proceed with our Tejas Leia data. For our Spanish language arts assessment, Tejas Leia, the data reads as follows. For Kinder Tejas Leia, the percent of students developed on all phonological awareness tasks is 54%. We increased from 13 to 54%. The percent of students developed on all graphophonemic knowledge tasks is now 83%. At BOY, we were at 53%. For the listening comprehension, the percent developed is now 67%. We had an increase from 36 to 67%. For first grade Tejasle, the percent of students developed on all phonological awareness is now 72%. That is an increase from 35 at BOY. The percent of students developed on all graphophonemic knowledge tasks is 58%. At BOY, we were 53%. The percent developed in comprehension is an average of 64%. That is a change from 54 to 64. In second grade, the Hasle, the percent of students developed on all graphophonemic knowledge tasks is 61. This area was at 61 at BOY. For second grade comprehension, the percent developed is 74%. This indicates an increase from 45 to 74%. Other reports available are a kindergarten readiness report ranked by percent of students not kinder ready. You will notice that there is now a BOY beginning of the year and MOY middle of the year side by side. You also have first and second grade ranked reports that identify frustrational students with little or no fluency. You will also notice that the BOY and MOY side-by-sides with the district averages are there at the bottom. These additional reports are ranked by campus based on need. They were shared with our elementary principals last week at our middle of the year data presentation. Our goal is for all our students to be reading on grade level and above. Now, using this middle of the year data, our elementary teachers have what they need to identify students who need additional targeted prescriptive instruction so that at end of year, all of our La Jolla ISD students may improve as readers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item number two, discussion of the La Jolla Lions Club vision vouchers. Um, <clears throat> good evening, uh, Dr. Benavides, Ms. Ochoa, distinguished board members, and uh, the rest of the community here. Uh, the following presentation, not gonna be done completely by me, but will be demonstrate how the La Jolla International, excuse me, how the Lions Club, the International Lions Club, and the La Jolla Lions Club team up together with La Jolla ISD and the International uh, Lions Club has a screening machine that checks its students for vision at a very young age so that you can have kids read and if they're reading they're closing gaps and you're seeing the scores increase and this is how the Office of Student Services along with both entities are uh, doing good for the students of La Jolla ISD at all levels especially at the elementary so I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mr. Cesar, the longer to come and uh, give you a little bit more of an insight on what the Lions Club at the international level does. Madam Vice President and board members, uh, we are certainly happy and honored to be here on behalf of the Lions Club. I say we because I'm going to introduce our team that came in today with us uh, representing the Lions Club. We start off by uh, uh, District Governor Emilina Vela. From La Jolla, please stand up. Yeah. And then we have uh, Lion Rosa Garza, who is the uh, PDA chair for La Jolla Lions Club. Yeah. And then we have past president Frank Alvarez from the Donna Lions Club. He is a member of the community of the And I do service. I'm uh, Cesar Montelongo, Texas governor and I'm the chairman of the uh, 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 vision screen. So I just wanted to introduce them so you could see. This is few, just a few part of the many 
members that we have that work on the report that you're going to get tonight. Thank you. So um, well, we start off with um, line. Um, Frank Conley has prepared for you. You gave him all the copy. Uh, prepared for you a copy as such that uh, uh, gives you. This is uh, what the machine does that we work with, you know, doing the vision screening. And it gives you the criteria of several, item, several items that, uh, that it does perform while doing the testing. Now, one of the main things, is, as you can see on the top, is uh, extematism. Now, uh, before I continue with these uh, reports, uh, I'd like to tell you that uh, Lions Club International is uh, celebrating our 100th anniversary. And we are at about uh, uh, 1.4 million members throughout the world. Uh, but in 1925, uh, Helen Keller uh, challenged the Lions to be the Knights for the Blind. And we took that challenge. And the way that we used to do that was that, uh, like the Lions Club here in, in La Jolla does, you know, you, you all send a student or the community will send a, an adult, and they'll get checked by the local doctor and uh, also will uh, provide the glasses. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because for years, the Lions Club has been known for that, you know, taking care of the blind. But I'd like to add, so that you all would know that uh, your local uh, optometrists are also part of that because of the uh, understanding that we have with them. You know, they give us a special price, you know, for, for the examinations and the glasses. So I just wanted to mention that. And so this is the criteria that, that the, uh, the machine is looking for, uh, which is entirely different of what we have in schools. In schools, we have the chart, and this is the, uh, the uh, uh, our machine penetrates the eye and will tell us if they have, if they fail any of these items here, they're recommended to go see the doctor. So the doctor will tell them what is wrong with them, and they will tell, the doctor will be able to tell them you know, what is needed, and, and they will perform the rest. Uh, one of the things that the machine does also is provides a, uh, you have a copy of that also, a uh, report of the uh, screening. And right here on the, this one here that you see that I have showing on the screen is the one that is a, a perfect uh, screening by the uh, machine. And on the right-hand side, on the upper hand, you know, that's the picture of the student or the, uh, the adult. And then it has the readings of the eyes. And then on the bottom part, uh, it also it has the criteria. Now this one here, the other one that is in red in your copy, this is where it's recommending further eye examination. And you can see there that this is an adult here. So this is what the doctors will see and, and uh, go from there. Now the doctors uh, enjoy or really like what we do because Right before we started doing all this, we went to the doctors and we explained to them what we had and we showed them the camera and all that. And so they are familiar with the machine and they told us right away that it's accurate is uh, right at about 98% uh, of the screening. So they are happy that, what, that we're doing this and um, when they see this, this printout, they know it's coming in front of this machine so they know what we're, what we're doing out there. Now, um, our motto in, in Lions Club is we serve, and uh, we really want to thank uh, the school district and uh, all the area and the community in the valley because they have given us, us the opportunity to serve our community in other ways. You know, each club or the valley, we have like about 30 clubs, Lions Club in, in the valley, and each club has their own projects, you know, to help the community. So each club will be serving like you know, a lot of people, and also putting in a lot of hours to do this. Well, with the, uh, we've been doing the vision screening for now five years. And in those five years, we have screened pretty close to 100,000, you know, students and adults. And uh, right before you, you have your report that we did here in, in, uh, in La Jolla. And we did 21 schools. We were there from the, uh, October the, 10th, the 22nd to November the 1st. And um, you can see the number there uh, for 2018. We did a total of 1,439 students that were screened. On the right-hand side, we had 249 that were 
referred to the eye doctor for further examination. And this is where, you know, we're happy that we're doing this because we're assisting, you know, all those students, the younger students, uh, you know, to get their eyes exam at an early age so they'll be able to continue their education. And uh, I found out that when I do this presentation to the superintendents, they don't look at the number of how many we did. They look at the number of how many failed, which means that number is going to be helped you know, for the future, because the reports that we're getting from the teachers also, or the nurses, is that uh, they see more students now wearing glasses with, you know, that have been examined by the PD vision. So uh, I want to thank Mr. Villarreal and all the school nurses, because they have also a great part in this program. Because when we go, we request that somebody's there with us at all times. We don't want to be there with the children, especially with the students, by themselves. We want somebody there to be there so they can see what we do. We never touch a student. Uh, we always do the examination at about a, maybe three feet away from them. And uh, we never tell them, you know, what is wrong with them. The, uh, the nurse will keep a flash drive with all the information of their schools. And also in that flash drive, it will have the ones that they did they need further examination. So they, in turn, give these uh, uh, printouts to the parents, and they go to see the doctor. Do we have any questions? No, but I do want to say and extend my gratitude uh, to you and the Lions Club for everything that you do in supporting and enhancing our students so they can continue being successful in their learning. Thank you so much. Thank it you. It is really our honor because, you know, we get a lot of benefit, you know, out of them, you know. Uh, we talk about pre-Ks, but these pre-Ks are smart kids, and so are the kindergarten, you know. So we get a lot of satisfaction on it because, uh, uh, like I said, you know, we serve Charmato, and, uh, you know, uh, for this year, we did 23,000, you know, in the whole district uh, screenings. So that's 23,000 more people that we help on top of all the other ones I said a while ago every club, they have projects in their areas. So if we put all this together, you know, it'll be 23,000. So. If we only help one, we've, we've helped so many. I remember as a child in elementary, I thought that seeing Foggy was, was normal until I got my pair of glasses and everything became a new world to me. Mm -hmm. So that says a lot. If we help one time. I'd like to, uh, tell you a story. We had a, a regular meetings in, in, in Donna, and they brought in this young man and uh, as a guest. And he saw us uh, rewarding a scholarship, you know, to one of our students. So right after the meeting, he stood up and he was, he had gone to school in Donna. So he got up and said, uh, he wanted to say something. And so he said, I'd like to make a donation to the club, to the Donna Lance Club. He said, but what I want to do is that I want to say that uh, it'll be used for the uh, uh, vision for eyeglasses. He said, I'll, I'll mail you a check, you know, to the, as a donation. So there we are waiting for the check and, you know, what is it going to be? Well, it was $1,000 that he, he did it. And then he said at the end, he said, the reason I'm doing this is that Don Alliance Club were the first club that were, it were, gave me my first pair of glasses. Wow. Oh, wow. So... <laughs> That's a, that's a great story that we had. Mm -hmm. so yes. Thank you so much. Thank, for you. thank you, sir. I know you're all thank busy, you so much. but uh, we enjoy doing this, and you can see what the uh, kids are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mentonongo. Uh, moving on to item number three, discussion and update on the Jimmy Carter Early College High School renovation. Good evening, uh, members of the board, Dr. Benavides, Central Office, and members of the community. My name is Mario Flores with the Facilities Department Maintenance, and uh, we're here to provide you with the latest update on the Jimmy Carter project. With me, I have uh, Carlos with the uh, engineering, and Manny with our architect. They're going to be able to give you more information.
Good evening, everyone, members of the board. My name is Carlos Trevino. I represent Hinojosa Engineering, um, and I'm here to share with you all a brief summary of the scope and the status of the project. Uh, in terms of scope, or its scope consists of repairing and stabilizing the building's foundation, as well as repairing the north brick wall and the interior of flooring uh, affected areas. In terms of uh, status, the project is on schedule. The north, the north wall uh, is currently being repaired. The foundation repair system has been installed. The foundation has <coughs> pictures. The foundation reinforcement was also repaired, and the foundation the foundation has been patched. The main items remaining are the repairs on the north wall as well as the interior floor, which are either currently ongoing or set to occur in, in the coming week. Question? Do we have any question? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Trevino. Is that it for that item? Okay, questions on that project? Sorry. Mm. Uh, at this moment, I would like to, like to inform the board on the upcoming project with the Fine Arts Chiller, which we're currently wrapping it up. And for that, I have Cesa with Titus Engineering. <clears throat> that's item number four? Yes. So that's item number four. Discussion and update on the Hoya ISD Performing Arts Center HVAC replacement project. Good evening, uh, members of the board. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Cesar Gonzalez. I am with Ethos Engineering. Uh, Ethos is the engineering firm uh, consulting on this project and the, the project manager for the, the construction. I will start with uh, explaining the scope of work. Um, this is at the Performing Arts Center and uh, the scope was to expand the existing mechanical yard which is the, the, the real estate of the property who, what houses the, uh, the heart of the uh, air conditioning system. It's located on the back side of the building. Um, we re replaced one existing chiller with two new chillers, and the scope of work also was to upgrade uh, the chiller controls, basically the brains of the system. The construction cost was 386000 The contractor, uh, it's Air Cool Tech, which is also present here tonight, uh, Mr. Samuel Cantu. The goals of the project was to replace a 20-year-old chiller, which again, uh, uh, I mentioned earlier, it's, it's the, the heart of the, the, the cooling plant. Uh, it was to, also to increase the cooling capacity uh, the existing chiller, or the old chiller, was undersized, and uh, for the several years, uh, the facility had problems with uh, keeping up with the load. That's why we also uh, needed to provide uh, redundancy on the equipment. Uh, the existing uh, conditions, or the old conditions now, uh, we only had one chiller, so every time that chiller failed, the facility would be down. Um, in addition, we improved the equipment access where those the children were installed, it was really, really tight. There was no space to work or maintenance uh, and service those children. And in addition was to uh, improve the energy efficiency. The, the benefits, we have two children now in, in, instead of one. Uh, we have 260 tons uh, of cooling capacity, which is 30% more. Um, around eight years ago, 
the school had to remove the load of uh, several spaces from the children and uh, they converted those uh, air conditioning system into DX, which is not part of the children's system. Now we have the flexibility in the future if the district decides to move those back to the children, which is a more efficient system. Um, the other benefit is the reduction in, in maintenance work orders. Just, in, just uh, last year, maintenance had to spend about $30,000 on trying to get that children running. <clears throat> and uh, we now have proper area to work around the equipment for maintenance and service. Um, I would like to highlight that on the energy efficiency side, um, Mr. Chapa, when uh, the facilities director, when we started designing the project, he made us uh, jump through hoops, uh, demanding that we not only go and specify the the first on a first cost basis the the chillers for for the facility, but that we look into what would be the best value for for the district. So. What we did is we, we analyzed uh, about a, a dozen of different scenarios, different brands, different chillers, different efficiencies, efficiencies, and different costs. So we specified a piece of equipment uh, that was going to give in the long run the best value for the district. On this graph, um, the, the graph on the left, it's the, the annual energy cost uh, on a dollar per year. The left side is the old children that was in place, which uh, was spending about $50,000 a year. And the new children um, is going to be spending half of that. So uh, <coughs> with, with the new installation, um, the expectancy is that we're going to be saving about $27,000 a year in energy just for the replacement uh, of the equipment, not to mention that we have more redund we have redundancy now. So for those that, who are, that, that uh, are the, in favor of sustainability, which I think the district is, uh, that's about 400,000 pounds of uh, annual reduction of greenhouse gases. House gases. And uh, in simplest terms, is, uh, 39 cars were removed from the streets. That's uh, an old picture of where the children used to, used to be. As you can see, it was very, very tight. There was no place to work around to remove any piece of equipment, not to mention that it was surrounded by high walls. It could not get the proper airflow, and it could not deliver performance. Um, so the plan was expanded to the backside, uh, and we now have two children in place, and uh, we have better access for it. So in conclusions, um, the benefits are in place now. The chiller plant is running, both chillers are up and operating. The project is on schedule and is substantially completed. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the brains and the heart had been replaced, but there's still room for improvement in the facility. So the building is now ready for the phase two, which is changing the boiler and changing the, the air handlers. And with that, I, I finish my presentation. Any questions? Any questions? No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Up next, we have a present item number five, presentation report, Shepherd Government Affairs. Good evening, uh, Madam President, Board of Trustees, Administration, Dr. Benavides. Gus Garcia with Shepherd Government Affairs, along with my associate, Obi Salinas. <coughs> uh, the 86th session, I'm sure how I get this going, but the 86th session for the legislator has begun. Our focus has been working with the legislators at the Capitol. We visited with approximately 100 chief of staff, representatives, and legislative directors to discuss La Jolla ISD and, of course, the program that we have, some of them have seen today. Uh, there has been a primary focus by Governor Abbott, the Speaker of the House, and the Lieutenant Governor for school finance reform. I think all of you know that that's the number one priority right now at the, at the school district. I mean, I'm sorry, at the, the legislature. One of the things that is of huge concern is recapture, uh, where more affluent districts are sending money to the state that's being delivered to 
the poor districts. This could have a significant impact to the to the poor districts, obviously, depending on what the legislation decides on. Our focus has been on the Public Education Committee, which consists of approximately 13 representatives in the House. Uh, we've been talking to them. We have hand-delivered uh, information to them regarding the Hoya ISD and the benefits of uh, the programs that are here in this area, as well as what you're providing the students in this area, as well as what La Jolla, uh, what La Jolla is comprised of as far as uh, representing students from five different communities, uh, that there's approximately 28,000 students here in La Jolla ISD. And the fact that if you couple that with the number of people in these communities, uh, it's, it's significant. And I don't think that uh, they're aware of that. We have met a positive response from all of the committee members who we've visited. Uh, there was a letter, um, if, I can, if I can get this up. I'm not sure you guys can see this, but there was a letter that was sent out in October to the legislature uh, by Dr. Benavides. The next letter, Dr. Benavides. We have hand delivered this letter to each one of the legislators, legislative directors, and the chief of staff for each one of those uh, members on that public education committee. Had a conversation with them about La Jolla ISD. Uh, it was met with very positive response. Um, as you know, the, re the schools that are in the recapture district are pushing heavily to change that. They don't they don't uh, like the fact that recapture money is going to the poor district. And there has been some information that's identified in the letter. I'll let you have a copy copied on. Uh, and they were like they were met with very positive information. Explained to them about the number of students that you serve, we explained programs at the sports and learning complex, that ten percent of the monies that were utilized were utilized for some of this programs as well as the positive aspects of those programs. And of all the people, all the representatives on the uh, Public Education Committee, none of them had received this letter. Now that's not uh, because of the efforts of the, of the school district, but they receive thousands of letters every day and typically don't read them. But once they were given the information, it's very positive. Now one of the things that they did want was more information on it. And we suggested that we have uh, Dr. Benavides or maybe the program director for the program to come and testify before the House Committee on Public Education. But the chair, which is Dan Huberty, was very positive about. And so we have paved sort of the way with the committee, Public Education Committee, to come and discuss uh, these programs, the data, information that's available to them so that they can understand what, what you're providing. And so, uh, as I mentioned, we have talked about all the programs that are available, that are being provided. Uh, and as I also mentioned, there's other factors or there's other, other entities that are highlighting certain areas that are uh, literally not wanting to capture. And this is all very germane because of the fact that public education, the student raise, the teacher raises that are being discussed of both House and the Senate, uh, we just feel it's very important that we keep hammering that, that message. As well as uh, with the grants and information, we have been pursuing that. We have that. On a, on a holistic level as far as the programs that La Jolla offers. I know that my associate has a couple things to talk about as well. Hello, my name is Robert Salinas, and uh, just kind of want to add to what Gus is saying. A lot of these uh, members that sit on the uh, education, the Board of Education uh, the committee, weren't aware, uh, and they were just kind of reading the headlines. And so we were able to go in there and identify and let them know that you know La Jolla does serve uh, four cities. There's about 70,000 students in the, in the area, and uh, this stuff was, was needed for, for, for this particular project. But I also met with a representative of uh, Oscar Longoria office, with Oscar Longoria himself, uh, representative uh, Sergio Munoz, who we felt were needed to be in the loop of what we're doing up there because they are your local representation. They're senior members of the House of Representatives. They are both on the appropriations, and they're both huge assets to this school district if uh, we utilize them. And so in speaking with them, they're very excited about La Jolla taking a proactive approach uh, to this issue. Um, they, were also, they, were all, they also felt that it was very important uh, to continue this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, uh, communication and representation between La Jolla and their offices, because they want, they want to be able to help. Uh, they both said, we're ready to jump in. What do they need? What do they need from us? And so that was very positive for, from um, both the representative of this district. 
And with that being said, they also were, they also want to know, um, Oscar also, asked, uh, um, Representative LaGuardia went ahead and set up a meeting with Huberty, which is the chairman of public ed, and was very, very instrumental in letting, letting him know that we needed to meet with him and we needed to get the truth to them, uh, to him. And so one of the things that there, we kind of <laughs> mentioned that maybe uh, going up there and testifying before his committee, and he was very excited about that as well. So I think that's something that we can consider. Um, both representatives <laughs> are wanting me to extend an invitation for La Jolla to have their personal legislative day um, up there at the date y'all choose. And they think that that's very important. They're ready to jump in and help out wherever they need, if it's financials or whatnot. I think that every office that Gus and I went into, they all asked about the uh, mariachis and the Puerto uh, of La Jolla performing under the rotunda like they do every year. Uh, and you're talking about representatives from East Texas, West Texas, and all over. They remember the performance from La Jolla. So that was something special to always hear and listen to these representatives talk about La Jolla. So there's a positive vibe. If we work together as a team, we get over the sub, I don't see any doubt that the, the best is yet to come for La Jolla. Uh, and, uh, but the communication needs to be there between all parties. Uh, and that was basically uh, reiterated to me by both representatives, Munoz and Lagoya. So I just wanted to report that. Uh, anything else? Any questions? No. I would like a copy of that letter that you gave to uh, legislation. All of us provide a copy of that just so we can have. And two, what's your next steps? I know you met with legislation, our state reps, and so what is y'all's next step? We are now scheduled for next week. We, we, we came down with certification, but we were scheduled and rescheduled today to meet with the Senate on the Senate side of the public ed and explain the letter to them. Just to restate. Kind of, kind of, kind of address the, uh, Just to restate what Ovi said is to be with the Senate now. We've been focused on the House, but now we're going to meet with the Senate. And so. Thank you. I think our next steps is to continue to focus on what exactly La Jolla is providing and to also address this letter and the media attention that some of this letter covers so that they can understand the truth behind it. The facts are on our side. Uh, if you look at the information that Dr. Benavides has provided, it's, it's, it's key and it was an eye-opener for all of them because they weren't, they weren't aware of it. The fact that the letter was sent was important. I mean, it was key. But again, they received thousands of letters. This, this happened in October. Session is now starting. Everybody's in place. And so we're not just talking to the representative, we're talking to chiefs of staff and also legislative directors who communicate everything at the, at the Capitol. So I think that's really important. And I just want to keep this on a positive note, but you know, there, there are people where we walk in, into the offices and there's people, as we come in, people are coming out from, for instance, the oil counties where they're saying, hey, you're taking all of our money and you're giving it to poor district. We're literally crossing paths. So it's important that they see that we have facts on the side and they understand exactly what uh, La Jolla is doing. Mr. Garcia, this is an old letter that uh, we sent in, in October. Yes, ma'am. We have updated the information, and we have provided Senator Hinojosa the updated information based on the presentation that uh, Mr. Vela and Mr. Garza made for us here. And we've also uh, provided it to uh, Dr. Chavez, who represents the South Texas districts here, uh, because we broke it down even more, um, because this is old this is from the fall then we need to but make sure that they the get other one the is more updated and it has all the information they requested it so we submitted it to them to okay. senator Hinojosa and also to um to uh, Mr. Uh, dr chavez and i think that's very important uh, the other thing is that the committee chair or the committee i'm sorry the, the public ed committee was formed at the end of uh, january so now we have the 13 committee members that are going to be making the decision on public education so we really focused on them because staff and members, right? But we probably want to focus and get those to them as well. If you can get us the time to go out there and and present, that would that would be amazing for our okay. district and because we'll guide you we have a very good presentation on an exp the explanation of the natatorium and all all that stuff that yes, that we, is being utilized. And if we can get just the opportunity to go up there and present, that would be amazing. And again, we'll guide you through that process. Okay. Get you in front of the committee to testify. Perfect. Of course, we sort of paved the way for that. Thank, Thank you. We can also get you in front of uh, the chairman, you would one on one, and to discuss, and the vice chair of the of Club Dead in the Senate side and in the state of the House representative side, so that everybody's on the same page when they make this decision. 
There's a lot of funding that's coming this way, and we want to be a part of that. The $5,000 raise for all the teachers across the board is very important, and so that's going to help everybody out. And I know both representatives and the senator are real uh, excited about getting that done for you guys, not only for La Jolla, but for everybody else. So we, are worried, said, we are worried about the 5000 because we don't know how much they're going to fund of it, and so that's... That's the other thing. The, that's the governor's mandate where he wants to reduce property taxes, but he also wants to make sure that they provide the funding for the school districts for that yeah. $5,000 raise. So that, all that is being discussed right now. We'll, wait, we'll wait and see. We're tracking uh, approximately 40 bills right now. Some of them will never see the light of day. When we get the ones that we know are going to be rotating through the circuit, we're going to be providing you with that list now. Yeah. We'll make sure you get close up. <laughs> anyway, any Thank more? you. No. No, I don't have any other questions. No, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Yes. Moving on to item number six under discussion items. Uh, discussion points for increased bus safety. Good evening, uh, board and uh, Dr. B. Administration, most important our community. We're here to uh, talk about some key points of safety in our bus, but uh, I want to discuss a little bit of, uh, about our goals here in transportation, what we do. Uh, so the foremost is to provide the safe and most efficient transportation for our students. Uh, we also provide transportation for, for, we are the only district in the state of Texas that provides transportation to every, or we allow every student to, to ride our school buses. Uh, we, we, we travel about 3 million miles a year, which is about 120 20 times around Earth. That's how much we, we ride it. We also, we also provide transportation for about 17,000 17, students. Uh, and I, I always discuss it with my, with my transportation department. The most important thing is working with our community, working with our cities. Uh, our, we are in a unique situation because our district provides transportation for five cities and plus the, the rural community of Western Seattle County. So that's just a, a brief summary of what transportation is. At the same time, uh, safety is our, our main priority and we, we work in, in in, in, with, with, with our, our police department. So one of the things that, that we're, we're, we're often doing is, is checking our cameras. Our, our buses are equipped with three, cram, three cameras with, with, uh, with a speaker and that's, that's essential when situations arrive in our buses and, and we always go back to our cameras. Uh, we're also looking for, for ways to enhance that which is uh, we're, getting some, we're currently getting some quotes to, to maybe have a camera on, uh, on the outside to, to make sure that uh, we're aware of our surroundings. If something does happen, we have evidence to, to look back at. Uh, we're also looking to, to there, there's a system that's, that's been approved by the state, which is a, is a guardian angel, which is uh, some lights that we can, that we can put on the, on, the, on the front end of our bus, which will light up the area uh, in the front of the buses, especially in, the, in our north side where the lights are uh, non-existent in, in some areas. So, but most importantly, I think uh, the, the biggest asset that we have and, and we urge is our community to be involved, which is our biggest cameras, which is we have eyes on us on a continuous basis. So we ask the community to, to be engaged and to be aware of their surroundings when, when a, a bus is approaching or in the area. So with that, I turn it over to Chief. Good evening, uh, <clears throat> members of the board, Dr. Benavides, uh, Vice President. Just three comments. Number one is as a police department, we're gonna continue to work with our local state uh, and county uh, partners so that we can go out and, and enforce traffic laws, number one. Number two is we're going to pull resources within our police department. We have jurisdiction as police officers to go out and enforce traffic laws, in particular the, the cases involving the buses loading and unloading students. So we're going to assign officers to go out to the communities, to go out to the neighborhoods, to go out to areas that are not around our school zones to go and enforce these laws. And that's a commitment that we're going to do so we can do every uh, uh, that everything that we can with our uh, our authority to make sure that uh, the motorists uh, comply with the law because it is their responsibility to make sure that they obey these laws so that we can protect our kids when they're getting off and on our school buses. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Very Thank, good. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Item number seven, discussion and update on La Jolla ISD wastewater treatment facilities. Good evening, members of the board, Dr. Menavides, everyone in the audience. We'd like to take this opportunity to give you a brief update on the wastewater treatment facility. 
As of February 1st, 2019, La Jolla ISD has completely taken over the wastewater plant day-to-day -day operations. TCEQ now has La Jolla ISD as a new signatory authority on file. RGV Waterworks last day was January 31st of this year, and they have turned over any and all necessary closeout documents, access keys, and equipment to our physical plant department. We have also made contact with a testing lab company to do the weekly sample test results at all of our wastewater plants. We have also interviewed and submitted personnel recommendations for your approval. In addition, as per our SUD engineers, we are only able to connect one wastewater plant to the sewer collection system at this time, which is at Sam Fordyce Elementary. But by August of uh, this year, 2019, we should be able to connect five other schools, but none of which have a wastewater treat treatment plant. Uh, this concludes the update of the wastewater treatment facilities, and I'll take any questions, if any. Thank you, Mr. Villarreal. Thank you, Mr. Villarreal. Great you. job. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Thank you. Moving on to item number eight under public comments, uh, we have one person wishing to address the board, Mr. Raul Montoya. Uh, Mr. Montoya, you have three minutes to address the board, and we'll give you like a 30 second warning before the, the three minutes are up. Okay? And I'll tell you when your, your time starts. We're going to get the timer ready, sorry. Just give us one second. So your time starts now. Good afternoon. My name is Raul Montoya, and I am here to address you as a concerned student. According to a meeting held called the advisory pack, La Jolla ISD wasted, spent $21 million on a water park. What was the need for this water park? I firsthand saw a student drop out from La Jolla ISD to go to Job Corps where they offer more opportunities to students who are bright and talented in the welding field. La Jolla ASD could have invested $21 million on a technical school for our students who want to pursue a career in welding, but instead they invested it in a water park. The sports department head stated that La Jolla ISD has $3.6 million specifically for sports. One of my classmates told me that they had to buy their own cleats, whereas another student told me that he could not get into a sport because he could not afford the cleats and felt embarrassed afterwards. How can this be if there is $3.6 million uh, reserved for situations like this? The track at Palmview High School is deteriorating and students are getting shin splints because of this. We need turf on our field to prevent, to prevent injuries that have been happening throughout the year, such as ankle sprains due to field being muddy. The facilities at our campuses are falling apart and students are being held back from joining a team and excelling in sports. We want La Jolla ISD to use the money that was intended for our students to better these facilities and make sure each student has what they need. The La Jolla ISD website states that they will bring students positive self-esteem, but I do not see this to be true if the students are struggling and getting hurt. When you improve facilities, it raises self the self-esteem of students and helps them perform better. I have seen my friends of mine leave to other districts due to what La Jolla ISD is lacking, but could definitely have. We want to know what La Jolla ISD is doing with these funds. La Jolla ISD, please explain all of this. As students, today we bring out light to these serious concerns. We want money, we want the money invested in us and not on other things. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Montoya. You. Okay, we're we're moving on to item number nine, consent agenda. Also move. Second. We've got a motion by Mr. Salinas, a second by Mr. Cantu. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Now, um, under item number 10, contracts? No, I'm sorry. Business and finance. Bi letter C, but business and finance, no, item number five, budget amendment. I so move. Second. Motion by Ms. Ochoa, second by Mr. Cantu. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes, item number six, application of payment request for consultant services fees to oversee the operations and management of the La Jolla ISD wastewater treatment facilities. I so move. Second. Motion by Ms. Ochoa, second by Mr. Cantu. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries, item number seven, <clears throat> change order number one for La Jolla ISD HVAC replacement project at the Performing Arts Center. So move. Second. Motion by Mr. Salinas, second by Mr. Cantu. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Motion carries, item number eight. Change order number two for La Jolla ISD HVAC replacement project at the Performing Arts Center. So move. I'll second. Motion by Mr. Cantu, second by Mr. Salinas. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, under human resources, no items. We move on. It's um, now 8.05. At this time, we're, we're going into executive session according to Texas government code, section 551. It is 10.45 and we are out of executive session. I apologize for the long wait. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, Madam Vice President, I'd like to make a motion uh, under letter H, items 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 as discussed in the executive session. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Salinas, a second by Mr. Cantu. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I'll go ahead and go by recommendation on legal. So move. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Salinas, a second by Mr. Cantu to postpone item number 11 until February 18th at noon. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. It is now at 1046 and we are adjourning this meeting. Thank you.